regardless of who you are, there's something innate in all of us that wants to connect to nature. So because of that power of this place, I think Falling Water, unlike any other house, can connect you, can touch you in some way. My name's Justin Gunther. I'm the director here at Falling Water, which is a property entrusted to the Western Pennsylvania Conservancy, and we're located in Mill Run, Pennsylvania. Frank Lloyd Wright was all about the concept of breaking down the box, taking down walls that divided space by use. So if you think of a traditional house where you have a living room and a dining room and an office, he would break down all of those walls, unify all of those uses into an open plan. And that really is the fundamental of modernism, that idea of breaking down the box. The first floor, the great room of the house, really is that concept of the open plan fully realized in his architecture. So you'll have a section of the great room that's for dining, one for the office, one for the record player and entertaining, and then just kind of nooks throughout that space for gathering of your friends and intimate conversation. But they're all unified into this one remarkable, beautiful space. And throughout the architecture, you're gonna experience this idea of compression and expansion of space. So when you're on the second floor of the house, you're gonna be squinched down into a very tight hallway as you navigate the second floor. But then when you go into the individual bedroom spaces, nature is gonna explode in front of you and open up. Falling Water is often regarded as Frank Lloyd Wright's masterwork, his masterpiece. There's this great story um, and the apprentices confirm this story. Edgar Kaufman was in Chicago on a business trip and he called out to Frank Lloyd Wright at Taliesin and said, Frank, I'm coming to see you. I wanna see our plans for the house at Bear Run. And that gave Wright apparently about two hours and apparently he had never put anything to paper. So the apprentices are sharpening Wright's pencils. They're all hovered around him. He's drawing the rough floor plans of the house. So if you think about that, that seems like a impossible task to design a house this complex in a short window of time. But if you think about how architects think, they really are composing in their minds, creating spatially in their heads before they ever put pencil to paper. Immediately, the Kaufmans bought into the idea of this house. They all loved the daringness of it. Um, they loved the creativity of it, the innovation of it. They were innovative in and of themselves as tastemakers, so they embraced this idea. Um, and throughout the whole process of the designing of the house and then the construction of the house, there was a constant dialogue back and forth between family and architect. So there are some really significant design elements in Falling Water that were actually ideas of the family. Um, where glass meets stone, Frank Lloyd Wright originally was gonna put a metal casement. Edgar Kaufman Sr. said, well, why not just let the glass disappear into the stone without any metal to accept the glass? So you have this seamless interaction between the materials. And that was a suggestion of the Kaufmans and something Wright would go on to use elsewhere in his architecture. So it's this constant kind of dialogue back and forth. And that also makes it organic because organic architecture is not only about responding to the natural environment, but it's also responding to the needs of your client. You know, Wright's philosophy of organic architecture, it's always looking to gain inspiration from the site itself and the creation of the architecture. And the architecture should always be responding back to nature. There should be an ongoing dialogue, one that's constantly evolving and changing as the nature changes around the architecture. This house could have been built nowhere else because it is so site specific. He so deftly responds to the landscape here. I don't care if you're six years old or 90 years old. You know, to a six-year-old, it's that treehouse out of your imagination. To a 90-year-old, it's something so refined aesthetically. I mean, we have people that cry after they come here. So, I mean, yeah. it's like, it's, yeah, it, it really is an inspirational place. Nowhere's like it.